All right, good morning. Glad to have everybody with us this morning for our um, combined Bible fellowship. No one's listening to me. Story of my life. Hey, uh, so glad to have you with us this morning. This is our fourth installment of Prepared for Transition as we get ready to move to 1235 South Park Avenue. And uh, so this is being recorded. So if you know someone who's missing, who's been trying to keep up with this uh, with this little series, um, that will be uploaded on our YouTube channel uh, sometime tomorrow. But uh, we're recording it. Thank you for being here with us. Everybody's in here from teen through adult. Just a reminder again, uh, prayer leaders, please make sure you uh, gather prayer requests from your class so those can go out this week. Also, attendance takers, please make sure that attendance gets taken. Uh, look around the room as you need to. Uh, Pastor Coppock won't be bothered by that. And, uh, and so uh, be ready for that. Of course, we'll meet for Bible Fellowship in our classes next week over at 1235 South Park Avenue, the new home of Faith Baptist Church. And so as, as we've been going for the last several weeks, Pastor Coppock has been just kind of running through a series uh, as we prepare for that, as we get ready to move, uh, just making sure that we're all on the same page uh, with our, uh, our philosophy and our theology, but also just practically speaking want to make sure we get over there and know what we're doing and are able to be a blessing and a light in that community where we're going to be. So uh, we're going to start with a word of prayer, and I'm going to pray, and then Pastor Coppock is going to come, and he's going to open the word this morning. Father, we thank you so much uh, once again for the privilege that you give us to meet together in this place. Thank you for what this, um, this place has meant to us. Thank you for what this place has been for us, a gathering spot. Um, uh, so that we um, can worship together as, as we worship corporately. We thank you that um, you have brought this group together this morning. Father, I pray that uh, you'd be honored by the conversation today. pray that you'd be honored by the discussion, by the way your word is handled. Uh, Father, I pray that you'd give Pastor uh, Coppock clarity as he speaks, uh, as he declares the truth of your word. I pray that we ha would have hearts open and receptive. pray that your spirit would move and work in our midst. Challenge us, Father, today, please. I uh, pray that as we uh, prepare to make this transition, Father, I pray that we would do so with unity, uh, that we would do so with gratitude, uh, and as we look forward to, to what you'd have for us in the days ahead. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Garrison. I appreciate your work this morning. And, um, and so many, I cannot believe as I look around and see so many people working and it's exciting to me. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was you, Brother Lane. But somebody reminded me yesterday of something that Aaron Coffey said a couple of years ago about this church. He said, man, he said, what a healthy church. He said, there's so many things I don't know, know about this church. So many things I'm not aware of. But he said, I just see the activity. I see the, the bustling of God's people. I see them serving, see them serving one another and serving the Lord. And I'm, I'm really privileged to be a part of something like this. Uh, some people wait their whole lifetime in hopes of being a part of something special that God is doing like he's doing in our midst right now. And so I'm very thankful to be a part of it, and I know that you are as well. Um, in the last few weeks, we've been talking about big things in small packages. We've been talking about how God uh, has set aside for us, for our example, for our illustration, four little creatures. I can't quite call them animals, and I can't quite call them insects, because some of them are animals and some are insects. And so, but these four little creatures that are, are small, but God, God compliments them or speaks of them for being wise. He said they are wise, wise. They are exceeding wise. Big things do come in small packages. Somebody did a study on, on famous people, and you wouldn't believe the list. Alexander Pope, four foot six. James Madison, the president, five foot four. Picasso, the Spanish painter, five foot four. George Babyface Nelson, the U.S. gangster. Boy, you go, George. Um, five foot four and three quarters inches and Napoleon Bonaparte, French emperor, five foot six and King Tut, five foot six. And some of you are like, well, I'm shorter than that. Well, I, either way, I know that you can't always judge a book by its cover. You can't always know by the outward appearance what you're going to expect from something. And something may be small in man's eyes, but it's God who makes things big. It's God who declares things as big. And when God speaks of these creatures, the ant, the ant was powerless yet prepared. The ant was always working and the ant was always busy and diligent, 
doing what the ant could do in preparation for the future. The hyrax, or the rock badger, as it's in some of our translations, the coney, is feeble yet founded. Here's a, a, a small little creature, kind of like, again, like a badger or a rabbit. Looks like that in, the, in uh, Palestine, they're, they're uh, well-known. And they make their houses in the rocks. They're feeble but founded. We talked about our foundations that week and how important it is for us to be founded, to be sure that we are, have built our lives, that we have built our ministry on Jesus Christ, that we have built what we are doing. We will always build on the rock, and that rock is Christ. And then last week we talked about the locust, unforced and yet unified, having no king to call them together, and yet somehow in, they, they come together in unity, and they're able to accomplish amazing things through unity. We talked about that last week and the harmony that can be had as God's people come together to do what God has called us to do. And today, the last of these creatures, the spider, the spider, modest, yet motivated. There's something about the spider here, and I don't know that these are necessarily in an order, a specific order that they have to be as if they're, they're building, they're becoming greater. I find myself excited about the one I get to teach today. Um, and as I think about the spider in Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 28, the Bible says this, small but exceeding wise, the spider taketh hold with her hands and is in the king's palaces. Some of your translations say the lizard, and, um, and that, that probably doesn't even matter. The po point is that this little creature, it gets into places where you would never expect it to get. I can't get into a king's palace. You can't get into a king's palace. I remember going over to Burma uh, 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 on a mission trip in 2003 in Myanmar, they call it today. And we drove around the palace walls, a palace uh, th that's some 200 years old. They hasn't been in inhabited by the royal family in years, but we still couldn't get in. There was no getting in. It didn't matter that we were Americans with money in our pockets. It didn't matter. We couldn't get in. And there are many places where people and powerful people, noticeable people, Large people can't find themselves, can't get, but the spider can get there. In every palace, there's a spider. How does it get there? Takes hold with her hands, he says. This little creature, this little uh, uh, baby, modest creature. Sometimes you can barely see the things. I remember uh, standing out in front of my garage as I was thinking about this lesson this week. I, I remember a, a couple of years ago, I was standing out in front of my garage and my dad and I were grilling out there and the, the, the smoke of the fumes came up on the garage door and little baby spiders started to drop from the, the garage door. You could barely see them. And it had been going on, it seems, and we were probably covered with them, who knows, at that point. And this happens all the time. Sitting in my office one day, minding my own business, if that be possible. And there I was, uh, uh, all of a sudden I see this little spider coming down right in front of me. I look up at the ceiling and you, I can't see the web. I can't see the, 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 the strand. I can't see any of it. And yet there it is. There it is. You would never have thought this one. It, the spider is not going to be in the back of the yearbook as the one who's the most likely to succeed. And yet there she is in the king's palaces. Modest and yet motivated. I think God includes the spider because he wants me to dream big about where I could go. I think God uses the spider because he wants us to be ambitious. Ambition is sorely underrated in churches today. Ambition. We work at humility and we work against pride. And we should. We work against these things. But I'm afraid many times th it, th th these conversations leave us without any ambition about what God might do. But here is this modest and yet magnificent creature that finds itself in places that you would never have guessed it would be. Petty, trivial, small, itty bitty little spider, modest and yet brilliant, motivated, magnificent. The spider is a laborer. This is not the one who's the investor or the doctor, the lawyer, the politician, not the king or the queen that we're talking about here. We're just talking about a little spider. And it challenges me to be motivated. That God 
might take us to great places, to the palace, to a place where, where, where he is seen as glorious, the place where the king lives. Even though we're small and modest, yet looks, look what happens when we're motivated. When we mean to do something, when everywhere people are doing nothing, what if we meant to do something? Teddy Roosevelt, that great theologian, said, the only man who never makes mistakes is the man who never does anything. That's not altogether true, but I appreciate him poking us about the importance of just doing something. Do something. God tells us in Scripture, and frankly, all through Scripture, you can imagine the verses that I had to push past in order to reduce this conversation today to a palatable amount of time. God says, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God says, you, you need to call out to me, because I want to show you things. I want to show you stuff. Don't you want to see things, church? Don't, don't you want to see what God would show you? I don't know what it, what it is about people who have no intrigue or no interest. I don't know what it is. You, you, you walk up to a child and you say, I got something. And they're like, what is it? What is it? What is it? But somehow we as adults, we're past this. And somebody's like, we got something in this box. And we're like, yeah, I got stuff to do. At what point did we stop wanting to see more? At what point did we lose our ambition? The, the spider finds herself in the palace. Uh, 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 marching past or squeezing past. Who knows how many guards and checkpoints. It doesn't seem to matter. We just know because she's willing to work with her hands and grab things with her hands. She's motivated. And so she gets to see great and mighty things. I'm always hesitant to phrase it just like I'm going to phrase it now. But God looks for people like this. He looks for people who want to see things. He looks for people who want to do things. Who want to be used by him. King Asa. The reason that God had a problem with King Asa. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16. Because King Asa lived by fear. Instead of by faith. He was afraid. When the Ethiopian armies came up and others. He had trusted God in the past. And then the small group came after him. And he was afraid. And he went and hired the Syrians. And the prophet came to him and he said, you really blew it here, bro. You really blew it. Because he says this, and now I'm reading from 2 Chronicles. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. God's searching to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein, you have done foolishly. You blew it. Because you live by fear. Because you're afraid. Instead of believing that God is powerful and God is strong. Church, let's have the audacity to believe that our God can do great things. That, that God can take us to great places. Let's believe that God is that same God who made the spider, made us. And he calls us to be motivated, no matter how modest we are. That we could be magnificent if we're in the hands of God. People motivated. I, I've, I've seen this over the last year or so specifically in a very bright illustration. As we've mobilized and worked toward getting to that other building. It, it has to do with people doing things and not for money. Uh, it was Firestone, the tire maker, Harvey Firestone, who said this. I've never found that pay and pay alone would either bring together or hold good people. It was the game itself. People were motivated by something other than money. And I've, I've seen this in this last year, especially to see people, many of which had given money and, and, and clearly they gave money because 
they were serving the Lord and you did that, those of you who did that or do that, you do that because you're doing it for the Lord. No matter who sees you, you're doing that for the Lord. Nobody noticed, nobody sent me a thank you card when I wrote a big donation. No, that's, that's right, because I didn't know it and the people who knew it, they ain't telling. So that's, 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 that's for your privacy's sake and frankly, it's to protect the name of the Lord in this place. And so, so, so thank you to the givers, but I know you did it for God. And then, then there are so many others of you who, who, who have worked, just worked and worked and worked and worked. I don't know what to do with you. I really don't. I don't feel like I'm worthy to be in the midst of such a group of people. Of people who, who just believe so strongly that God is here. And that God is worthy of our great work, our great sacrifice. We are motivated by something much greater than money. That God could take us as modest as the spider and take us to the palace. I love Jonathan in the scriptures and what he says to his armor bearer as he's trying to, trying to understand why people are hiding, why everybody's hiding, why are God's people afraid? And he says to his armor, it may be that the Lord will work for us. Hey, how about that? Let's, let's see. He says, for there's no restraint to the Lord to save by many or a few. He said, God's, God's not hampered like we are. God's not hamstrung like we are. God doesn't have the restrictions that we have. So why wouldn't we see what God would do? Why wouldn't we try? Why wouldn't we, with God's help, accept the challenge and see what God would do in our midst? Among the people that I've, I have meant to thank this month, I, I, I know m many of you are just like, D do not say my name. Don't tell anybody what I did. And I appreciate you for that. I do. But I've, I've, I've frankly not getting my instructions from you. And I'm, I'm just telling you that I, I desperately wanted to have a long list. But I know that next Sunday we need to go to church. If we have visitors that, that poke their head in the door, I don't want to spend the first day over at that building talking about how great we are and what we've done. Just not, that's not what we're going to do. I'm going to stand up next Sunday at the beginning of the service with God's help. I'm going to speak for six or seven minutes before we begin. And I'm going to uh, uh, lay down a couple of things in front of the congregation. My words that are prepared for next week are shorter than my words that I prepared for this morning. Um, but, but therefore, I need to say some things today to you. I just need to, to, to be grateful for some people. When it became clear to us that we were going to make a move, I sat in a leadership team meeting with our deacons and, and Pastor Garrison. And I said, look, some of us are getting ready to focus on this. We talked to um, uh, Coet and Bill and Doug, and we said, we're, we're getting ready to go and, and, and work on this transition. And so we turned to our other deacons, and specifically Brother Stuckey. Um, and, 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 and I asked you, Doug, I don't know where you are now. I know you're in church. There you are. All right. Because I know Susie wouldn't let him stay home. Um, but I said to you at that time, I, I, I need your help, Doug, because I'm, I'm frankly going to do less visiting this year. I'm going to do less, less connecting with people this year. We're getting ready to go focus on this transition and, um, and I need your help. I said the same thing to Chris Garrison and to Vanessa Rowland. I desperately need you and your help. And they, along with the visitation team that works on Mondays and in, a, you got to know in a COVID world, we have people who were offended that we came to their homes. We really do. And we have people that are offended that we didn't. And so we're, we're walking a tight wire here. And y'all just worked really, really hard to care for people. And I really appreciate you doing that. Um, Hilda and um, uh, Craig Kane. Uh, Hilda, I don't know anybody as faithful as you are at calling people. And there are people in this room, many of you know, that she calls you weekly and cares for you. And, um, and even when she's out of town and Doug's sitting in Vermont taking care of his grandkids, but he's still on the phone calling people in this church. And just caring for people at the gut level. And if, if we sure have worked hard not to overlook anybody. And if it was, if it was, anybody was overlooked, it wasn't their fault. Okay. These people worked really, really hard. And I appreciate that so much. The efforts that are made to care for people. And I want you to know, as we go to the new facility, I can't wait to put the transition behind us. I look forward to that. As I remind you, our our church will never be identified with a building. It has, it's not now and it won't be then. It's not what it's going to be about for us. I can't wait 
to see our efforts at outreach and evangelism and our care for people. Brother Garrison's going to talk to you about blue cards at the end of the service today. Next Sunday is a blue card Sunday, which means everybody, and that's you, everybody in the room will ask you to fill out a visitor's card next week. It's a connection card. And so I, I know you're not visiting, but he'll explain that. It's important. We're doing that so that we can connect with other people that are there. And so th these are all part of our efforts as a church to, to, to reach out. And it's critical that we do that. And so I really appreciate those of you who have cared for people in this last year, especially as others of us have been preoccupied with the move. As I think about the, the efforts that are being made or that have been made at the other building, there are other names that keep coming to my mind. I, I actually want to stop and just quickly back up and, and give you another illustration that you know very well. And it's the name of Caleb. Caleb in the Old Testament. Do you remember this man? He was the one who comes to Moses and says, my strength has not abated. That was at 85 years old. I'm at 50 years old, and I'm thinking my strength is abating. I'm feeling it. But here's this guy. And he says in response to those other spies, Caleb says, we are not, excuse me, in, in response to Caleb, who says, we can go. We can go into the promised land. And we can take whatever God says is ours. And listen to what the spies said. We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. There's a group of people that lacked motivation. There's a, a group of people who, who, who in, in the midst of the opportunity to do something great for God, they just missed it. And once again, this is why I'm so thankful that those 10 spies don't attend this church. I, I, I'm just so thankful that, that that kind of negativity, that kind of bad mouthing is not here in this church. God has blessed us with a group of motivated people who, who want to know what would happen if we would walk through doors that God opens to us. I want to say thank you to Colin McKenzie, who, who saved our lives on doors, saved our lives on glass, and, and uh, just did really, really critical things at critical points. I appreciate Colin. Greg Donahue, who is a painting machine. Uh, buddy, you're just on fire with a paintbrush. Okay, stay out of his way. I really appreciate you. Becky, thank you. And we called them your minions. Those of you who served with Becky with foods, thank you so much. There were many of you who did. And we appreciate you making a difference. Alan Fleming, the stone man, who understands and uh, mortared up the cracks and the stuff so long ago, Al, now that I have almost forgotten that they were there. You fixed so many cracks in the stone and those sorts of things, and not to mention just always there with the right tool or it was in his garage, he'll be right back. Yeah, I just really appreciate you, buddy. And Coet and uh, skydiving Coet. You just have to know this guy has put in so many hours, 79 years old before he learned how to remud a wall, and yet he remudded so many of those walls in that building and uh, did such a wonderful job. And I, I just appreciate you so much. Mike Blanton saved us on the bathrooms, saved us so much. And just not having to have an architect to design them. Bo, you said it yourself. You said, my word, we don't need an architect to draw these. We, these are wonderful. And drew up those bathrooms and really, really made a difference. Renee Blanton saved us thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on flooring. Just unbelievable amount of money that was saved on flooring. Bill and Liker. Such paperwork that has gone through your fingers. Such, such paperwork. Unbelievable amount of work that you have done to, to make sure that the numbers were right. Looking over things, reading things, sending me stuff. Have you read that yet? Oh, brother, no, Bill, I haven't read it. I'm trusting that you have, and he has. I appreciate it so much. Alan, I wasn't sure what you were going to do when you came with the timeline. But you did such a great job with the timeline. And it, just your, your technical approach to the processes and what had to happen. And it was really, really helpful. Those of you who, I mentioned Greg a moment ago, but I think of the paint team. Uh, um, uh, Laura and Terry and my mother and Corinne, um, who still doesn't have any paint on her clothes. And the next time we see her, please just put some paint on her, somebody, okay? Just, just a bucket would help. It would just make us all feel better, this flawless painter. I appreciate it. Seth, Tim Coleman, Tim Goodwin, 
showing up at just the right time to get some important stuff done, just critical things with baseboards and, again, doors and um, uh, building things that the rest of us would take weeks to do. You guys can just do so quickly. I want to say thanks to my dad who believed in this move, I think, to this facility, I think, before anybody did, including myself. Walked into that building. I remember that conversation, Papa, and I appreciate so much you seeing what needed to be seen there. You say he's to blame. Actually, it's called credit, and yes, he deserves it. I appreciate it. Eldon News. Eldon, when you walk into that building, you're going to see that sound booth. And you're going to say, oh, my word, that sound booth looks like it belongs here. Well, it does belong there, and he put it there. Just did a wonderful job with that sound booth. But frankly, that's not the all of it. Eldon has been working on this move for years. And he has been in countless buildings. He has poured through countless, and I mean innumerable, internet ads, morning by morning, for 10, 12 years, working um, in buildings with me, with others, on our knees, praying, wondering, trying this, trying that, signing contracts, good faith offers. We've made them, and his fingerprints are all over it. I just can't tell you, Eldon, how much I appreciate you, your patience with this preacher. And uh, not kicking me aside. Don't tell me you weren't tempted. I appreciate you. I do. I appreciate you. And then there are the, so many of you whose names that I should mention now. The armies of the people of God who just showed up. Another 48 of you this week showed up to work. Showed up to work. I just can't tell you what a blessing it is to work among people who are motivated, motivated, like the spider, modest, and yet motivated. What would God do if we wanted to see the king in the palace? It would be wrong for me at this point to fail to remember that, that we were not the first ones here in this building. I have to think of my predecessor, Jeff Stiles, who's with Jesus today, and his wife, Louise, who lives in Tennessee. Those people in a congregation of people who worked so hard to make this building right, and we have gotten so much out of it. We have, with God's help in these years, gotten so much out of this building, and I'm really grateful because as I see our history, our church history being rewritten each year, we go to try to squeeze in another paragraph. We go to try to add a little bit more. And as we do, some of those early days, get there, those conversations get shortened each year. And they used to have six, eight paragraphs. And now those early years are down to about one or two paragraphs in our church history. And you know, I, I think that they'll do that with us one day. Men will forget what we have done. But we do what we have done for the Lord. And God never forgets what we have done. And so we trust that he has brought us to this place. Be disrespectful for us to forget those who were here before we were here. And we'll do our best to help our children to show some respect for that, for those days, and for these days with God's help. Because we hope that they will also be modest and yet motivated. Church, I would tell you how proud I am of you that you're willing to make a move and that you're courageous enough to do the hard things that you have been doing. There are pastors everywhere who complain to other pastors. And I hear their stories and I'm just so thankful that I attend this church. So thankful that I'm among people who are willing to do hard things. Who don't think that ease is the goal. I'm grateful for that. I'm proud of you for moving into town. Instead of moving out of town like many churches do. I'm thankful 
that you're willing to do this. I think about the building itself over there, and I know it's not perfect. I know it's not. The building's got issues still. I will tell you the front entrance is not fixed yet, but we're motivated. We're going to fix it by God's grace. We appreciate your patience. Thank the young adults. I thank you seniors who came a couple of weeks ago to check out the entrances and you young adults who next weekend, Rich, with your help, are going to be in place watching the ramp and the lift, making sure that people can get into the building safely. Modest, but motivated. We are, by God's grace, motivated to see these things together. We'll always be thankful to God. No list of people that we mention in gratitude would be complete if we didn't stop and remember that God's the one who calls us to be greater than what we are. God's the one that, that, that is, is the reason that we would be motivated. It would be his hands upon us. My hope is that today, as we think about these creatures, that we will never forget that God can take small things and make them great. God can take little things that people would marginalize and march right past and ignore the ant or the hyrax, the locust, or the spider. People would squash them like a bug. People would do that, but not God. God can take these little things, and he calls them wise, exceeding wise, if we as his people would learn. Powerless, yes, but prepared. Feeble, true, but founded. Unforced like the locust, and yet unified. And today, the spider, modest, yet motivated. May God use us. May God use us for his glory to do great things. I told you that, that I would try to squeeze in some more testimonies today, and that's exactly what we're going to do. And so we're going to start really quickly, if we could, please, um, with Brother Coet Combs. And I'd say, Coet, hurry on up here, if you would, please. But Coet's <laughs> tripping all over himself to get up here. Coet, I'm going to hand you the microphone, and hold on to that, if you would. Matt, I know you're in the room. If you'd come help me with the mic today, I'd be, be grateful. And so Coet's going to give a quick testimony today. I really wanted Coet because Coet had been here for a long time, and I wanted to hear from some of our older members who had been here, and I speak that so respectfully. Coet, when he's done, we're going to hand the microphone to Julie Noose. And, um, and I just wanted specifically the two of them to speak today because they've known this place and for so long. And I know others of you have, and if they're not long, then we're going to give you an opportunity as well. So, Brother Coet, you first. I'm just a dumb old country boy, Kentucky boy, that ain't so very smart. And when I talk, I get mixed up. My gears are hard to start. It seems I don't have many brains like other folks I know. And when it comes to society, my dumbness there, I show. I found it don't take brains, my friend, the best in life to gain. It's not your wealth or what you are, prestige you might obtain. It only takes just simple faith, eternal life to find. No matter who or where you stand, there's grace for all mankind. I went down to the jailhouse once to witness for the Lord. They told me how the Lord saved I told them how the Lord saved me. They sure looked mighty bored. They nudged each other and they smiled. They thought that I was dumb. But they stayed in and I walked out when leaving time had come. If you don't know my Savior, give me just a few minutes of your time. You're in trouble. Your eternal destiny is on the line. Let me tell you how the Lord saved my soul. If you will believe the Bible, he will make you whole. I'm still a dumb old Kentucky boy. I hope I'll always be just dumb enough to trust the Lord for all eternity. And so I'll just keep traveling on. No brains, not too smart. I'm just a dumb old Kentucky boy with Jesus in my heart. Yeah, amen. About, fif about 15 years ago, Linda and I came here. We visited around. We visited other churches where we, before we came to Faith Baptist. And when we came here, uh, Brent said it so well last week. We saw a friendly church and people loving on one another and loving us and welcoming us. And then when I heard Pastor Coppock preach and teach, I knew this is where the Lord wanted us to be. And we've never regretted that. And when I saw the, Linda and I saw the pastor, his wife Dana, and those two precious children at that time, Jeremy and Chloe. Matt was not here at that time, but he came along shortly thereafter. 
But when we saw how they were raising their families, we talked among ourselves and we said, our grandkids are almost grown, but we hope and pray that our great-grandchildren will turn out just like Jeremy yeah. and Chloe and then Matt also because that's the way we would want our families to live after us. So, Pastor Kopic and, uh, and Dana, I congratulate you for raising your family. You're a, you're a model for all of us to follow. We appreciate that. We love you so very much. Uh, it's been a wonderful place to worship here and grow and serve, but I don't want to dwell on the past. I want to I want to look forward to the future. I'm so excited. It seems like I know I said we've been here like 15 years. It seems like this church has been praying for almost 15 years for another place to locate, a bigger place, a place that everyone could be comfortable in serving and working and uh, trying to win people to the Lord and getting people to grow. And uh, so we prayed for many years for a bigger and better place. And God's answered the prayer. God has answered our prayer and given us. I know, I, as the pastor said a few minutes ago, there were several places that were visited. We prayed over those places, and God did not open those doors. And I think God knew, I know God knew what we needed, when we needed it. And quite frankly, back 12 or 14 years ago, when we were praying about another place, we didn't have the money to buy the other place with to begin with. So the Lord knew. He Amen. worked all things out. And by God's grace, we had almost $550,000 to pay for this place when it came on the market. So God blessed us in that area. So I challenge us to pray, to serve, and to give the gospel out. Uh, and I want to just remind you of something. I know uh, Brother Doug Lane has been putting a lot of lights in that building over there. And most of them are LED lights. They shine bright. They're much brighter than just the regular lights. And LED stands for uh, uh, lighted... Uh, uh, light emitting light diode. Light emitting diode. LED. LED. Now, Christians, we can be LEDs also. LED would stand for loving every day. Nice. So if we, if we serve God, if we show the love of Christ to people in the neighborhood... Every visitor that comes in our door, if we show that, we can be LED Christians, loving every day, and I believe God will bless that. God will use us. Another thing I just want to caution us about, me and everybody else, let's don't grumble and complain. And you say, well, we'd never do that, but look what the children of God did when he brought them out of Egypt. They complained. They even wanted to go back into slavery, and God was blessing them. We can complain. We complain about how far it is to walk into the new building. We could complain about the steps we have to go up. We complain about the long ramp. Let's don't do that. Let's just say God has blessed us. He's answered the prayer. Let's serve him there. And by God's grace, God's willing, that front driveway is going to be fixed before too long, hopefully. And we'll have a much better place to get in and out of the building. So let's pray and thank God for what he's done for us and go forward and serve him. I look forward to doing that. Thank Amen. You. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, Cohen. Thank you some good preaching. He started preaching a minute ago. I like that. Good morning. Eldon and I have attended Faith Baptist. We've been attending the church for 14 years. When we first started attending, I was impressed with the strict commitment to missions. We have had the privilege of going on several mission trips. Missions have always been important to me, spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth. When we were first married, I felt called to be a missionary. But a friend pointed out to me, we can all be missionaries in our everyday work. Amen. A Bible verse that is very meaningful to me is Isaiah 26.3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, Amen. Because, the Lord, because he trusted in me. This verse has made me realize that if I am in the Lord's will, I will have inner peace. I've seen that Faith Baptist Church is a caring, sharing, and loving church family. When we first came to the church, Pastor Kopek would, from the pulpit, introduce each visitor by name. I was always amazed that he had the ability to remember their names. 
also when we first started attending the church, was smaller and struggling. I've seen the church grow both physically, spiritually, and I feel that I have grown right along with it. One of the things I was looking for in a church was a choir. Over the last 14 years, the music ministry has had a big impact on the people of Faith Baptist Church. I was privileged to have Christian parents who attended church regularly. I also have a strong Christian heritage. My grandparents on both sides were officers in the Salvation Army. During our 52 years of marriage, Eldon and I have strived to serve the Lord wherever he led us, and we have tried to raise our children to serve him also. I'm looking forward to continue seeing the church grow as we move into our new facility. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. We've got a couple more minutes. Some of you didn't get a chance last week to testify, and so if there's anybody else that would like to give a testimony, this is your opportunity. We'll run a microphone to you. We'll send it over to you, Robert. Who's next after Robert? Anybody else? Anybody else? We'll get it ready for you. My wife and I came here 12 years ago. The day that we walked through the door, everybody, majority of the people knew who we were and they called us by our name. The pastor has been very good. When my wife had her liver and kidney transplant up at Mayo Clinic in 2012, and she had to go back up. The pastor and his son, Jeremy, made a two-hour trip to s just to go and see her. That was a blessing. The pastor has been a blessing ever since, and he continues to be a blessing. And we thank you for everything. Amen. Right here, Matt. Might not be very old, but uh, <laughs> old enough, I should say. Um, but I joined Faith Baptist Church when I was only 14 years old, before it was ever in this building. And uh, a lot of memories in this place. I remember this place when it was nothing but ground. And uh, as a teenager, helped with my parents and a lot of other people, put plaster on this building and put lights in and do all the stuff that everybody's doing in the new building right now. And uh, it's just to s think back, you know, all of all the memories and everything, just like Pastor has said over and over. It's just a building, but, you know, the memories will keep forever. And uh, I'm so glad to see the church grow and to see what it's become. Sometimes I've referred to myself as the prodigal son. You know, I started here in 92 and got away and came back home in 2015. We've been here for seven years now, so it's been a blessing to be back in this church and to see how much it has grown and to see what it's become. And so Amen. just so thankful for everything. I'm thankful for Pastor and for the friendship that we have and that we've established over the years. Just a blessing. Thank, Thank God you, for Sean. all of it. Thank you. Thank you. I, too, was here many years ago. The day I walked through the open uh, wall up there, it was about knowing, growing, and showing. And I think Pastor's first scripture reference was walking in the cool of the day mm. with the Lord. I feel so blessed. It's no mistake that I'm back here today. Having known, having grown, and now to watch the show, the showing of what God has done in this church. Amen. Moving it to another facility because we have grown this church. And the beauty that's in that building when Pastor walked me through, I was just completely blown away. And I wanted to be involved. I wanted, what can I do? What can I do? And Pastor says, go on out in the woods and find the tires that are out there. <laughs> well, I missed them the first trip when I had help. But I found them. And there were seven or eight of them chained together, and I dragged them out of the woods, took everything I had. And 
I said, I need to get him in the dumpster, but I can't do him by myself. And Pastor came walking by, and he asked me what was going on. And I said, well, I got this group of tires that are, and I just, I can't get him in the dumpster myself. He said, well, how about if I help? That commitment from this pastor, what can I do to help? Her love and compassion just draws people. And he, in turn, says, Jesus. And he points in the right direction to Jesus. And I thank you for that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good. Time for another one. Time for another one. Last word. Right in the back over there, Matt. Alan, was your hand up? We'll, we'll take it to you. Like many of you all, Cindy and I came here and we were trying to find out where, where we belong. And the most impressive thing, I would guess, that impressed me that this is the place for us was the pastor said, don't believe what I say. If it doesn't say that in the Bible, take the Bible's word, not mine. Thank That's you, right. Pastor. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come in your way, Al. <coughs> Karen and I and uh, the kids have been coming down to Titusville since the early 90s. Uh, we've attended many churches. Some we left in the middle of the, of the service because it wasn't godly. Um, but we could never, but we never heard of Faith Baptist in all the years that we've been coming down. We retired and moved down here, and we were worried about finding a church home. Uh, sometimes you don't worry, you pray. Um, one Sunday we attended a service at Eastland and one of the church leaders there said, well, have you tried Faith Baptist and Pastor Coppin? We said, no, we've never heard of it. Um, but the next Sunday we came and we attended service and we never left. Um, we marvel at why we didn't hear about Faith Baptist before. And we believe that God was protecting us um, and keeping the best till last. And when we joined this church, we didn't join a building. We joined a congregation, and we have fallen in love with you people, and we are so grateful that God has led us here. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, we, we need to be done. Um, it was important that we took some time in these weeks to have these conversations, and I appreciate it so much, church, that we have. And I mean, mean that we really need next Sunday to have short conversations about where we are and what we're doing. And we're, we're going to gather next week and we're going to worship. We're going to worship the Lord. And we're going to open the word of God. We're going to greet people, greet one another, and enjoy God's people. And uh, we're going to take our eyes off the clocks. I need you to do that with me next weekend, please. And uh, let's trust the Lord that he'll give us a time of fellowship together. And a time I hope to connect with other people as the Lord will we'll begin to walk other people in our congregation. Probably not all at once, because that's usually not the way it works. But we're going to just trust the Lord that he's got his hand on us, and he has thus far. And, um, and by God's grace, God's moving our gathering place. But our church will be the same church that you're looking at now. Same congregation, different location, by God's grace. Will you pray with me, please, and we'll be done today. Father, thank you so much for these and for their love for you. Thank you for the privilege that you have given us to serve you together. We thank you at the same time, uh, most of all, that we have Jesus as our Savior. We know that everything that we do is about Christ and that, that the only reason that we have a connection, that this is, this is not a social club and it's not a, a, a trend or a fad or something that's cool, um, but, but rather, Lord, that you have called us together. And because of that, we're, we feel very serious about it. We feel as, it, as if something sacred has happened. And we pray, Lord, uh, that you would find gratitude in our hearts for our time here, for our time in this place. And we know that it's been a gift to you. And I thank you again emphatically for the people who built this building, for the people who were here before my family was here and before uh, many of us uh, or most of us. Uh, we trust that your hand has been on this congregation thus far, and we wouldn't have it any other way. And so we trust in, dear God, that you will uh, continue 
uh, to guide us today in this specific service. I pray that your people would gather in the next couple of minutes, that you would fill this room as you do each Sunday morning, that your people would worship and lift up Christ, that it would always be about you. We're trusting you, dear God, for this and for every day. In Jesus' name, amen.